running. 89, take one. Eighty-eight, take two. Professor, this is the most marvellous spot to have a department of media and arts. It must be inspirational. What is it you do here and how does it work? It must be great. Well, we've been teaching media here uh, for about 20 years now. We have over 200 students who are on a degree which is half practice based. So they're making films, um, producing films, scripting films and so on. Um, we have another 50 master's students and it really is a wonderful place to be because a lot of the students live on campus so you get that real team feeling. Thank you. Cut. One. Cutaways. Professor, tell me, what was your first experience of television and what did you feel it did to you? Did it affect you in any way? Well, I, I grew up with television, so I think I arrived in the house about the same time as the TV, and I think it was um, a way for my parents not to have to talk to each other so much. So um, I can remember, you know, I grew up with, with all those wonderful children's shows like uh, Captain Pugwash, you know, little bits of moving cardboard and puppets like Andy Pandy, and particular favourite was the Flowerpot Men. I remember kind of imitating them with my mother and things like that, my little brother. So that was my earliest memory, was just kind of, you know, it, it was always there. Yes. And then going on, remembering um, the programmes I wasn't allowed to watch, that my parents um, sometimes would let me, sometimes wouldn't. So a lot about Tonight, the programme Tonight, um, with Cliff Mitchell Moore. I can remember very vividly being sent to bed because they were doing something about the, the Russian Revolution. And they were showing all this footage, and I was sent to bed. I wasn't allowed to watch that. I think it was 7 o'clock at night or something. So I, I can't remember what year that would be. What was the moment that maybe you wanted to work in television? Did it attract you as a, a medium, a way of communicating, or simply, not being rude, a way of making a living, which is <laughs> what we do? Well, I should be perfectly honest. Um, I didn't really want to go into television. I, I <laughs> wanted to go into movies. And I realised, you know, this was the end of the 1970s, there wasn't much of a film industry around. And actually, all the interesting things were happening on, on TV. And I'd seen a lot of movies, because I'd done a degree in English literature, which meant that I actually had a lot of time to go and see movies. Yeah. And there were lots of films around. And um, that's really where I, I kind of wanted to be. And then I realised that television was was the was the industry of the future, if you like, because um, I'd watched a lot of TV. Um, and I got my chance in 1982 with the beginning of Channel 4. So I'm one of those kind of renegade independents. Proposed a cinema series to Channel 4, and I think we got... I, I was working with two people who actually knew what they were doing, because I was just an academic. Um, and I think we got our chance because nobody else had proposed such a programme. Can you tell me about your early career in television and what its outcome was? It's it, always a disappointment. Making a programme, it's all, you, you always get disappointed. It's never actually what you'd imagined to begin with. And it was, you know, looking back now and, and, and seeing some of these programmes again, I think, well, actually, that's quite an achievement what we did there. But at the time, I was always slightly ashamed that we'd not quite achieved what we wanted to do. I could see all the faults, you know, there was problems with the sound, there was problems with the picture. We didn't get that interview. We should have asked this question. We should have just gone that extra mile. And actually, the problem is, as an independent, you know, you don't go the extra mile sometimes because you haven't got the extra money. That's your own personal money that goes the extra mile, and that, that you don't want to do. So it's always that sense of disappointment with making television. But looking back, having done the first ever history of, of cinema in China, for example. That was a major achievement. And nowadays, you know, um, it's become a matter of historical and archival record. Thanks very much indeed, Professor. Thank you again.